Hey guys, MA Fish Guy here doing a beta care sheet video. Now this is going to be a basic breakdown of the beta. I will be going into more specifics in later videos, uh, different diseases that affect them directly, and basically different general care, uh, right down to the details of water changes, everything like that. So let's just start this off. These guys, betas, they live about three to five years. Uh, usually three to four is more common. A lot of mine have only lived probably about the four year range. Uh, they are known as the Siamese fighting fish, not Japanese. Uh, a lot of people call these Japanese fighting fish, but they are not They're from Thailand, not Japan. Uh, they grow to probably about two to four inches. A lot of that is the actual fins though. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of fins and with some of your breeds, the fins are shorter, so of course they're going to be smaller looking. Uh, with females as well, they are the short drabby looking ones. Uh, with a lot less finage. So that's the easiest way to tell with a male and a female. And there's another way if you take, because um, a lot of times you're going to buy these at pet stores, uh, so they are going to be in those little cups unfortunately. Uh, all you're going to do is just pick up the cup and look at it from above. If you look towards the front of the female or the fish uh, where the two fins come down, you'll see in between that like a little white speck. If you do see that white speck, it's a female. Uh, if you don't, it's most likely a boy or an immature female. So that's an easier way too to tell. Uh, a lot of times your females are going to be nice and plump and you'll see that egg spot poking out. Uh, so these guys are a top swimmer, mid swimmer, some do swim on the bottom. Uh, these guys are really cool because a lot of them have different personalities. So you're going to see them all over the tank and they're not so much an isolated fish or need to be isolated. They can go with you know community tanks. Uh, as long as it's nothing that has fin nippers, some of your um, your barbs, some of your bigger tetras, uh, and as long as there aren't, you can get away with it sometimes, as long as there's not other betas in the aquarium. Uh, now they will nip the fins of the other betas, or even sometimes, sometimes fight to the death. Uh, most of the time it just ends up in a result of fin nipping, fins getting ripped off. Uh, it's not fun, but it's usually not a fight to the death. Now there are tricks and methods on how to house multiple betas together, uh, but I will be going over that in a specific video on tank setups. Uh, females can be housed together. Uh, a lot of people have them in what they call uh, sororities uh, for a lot of different females in the tank. Uh, there can be some aggressive females of course, just like any other fish, but for the most part you can keep them in a big tank together without usual problems. So temperature, these guys do like a warmer temperature. Uh, 78 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. I usually keep mine about 78. Uh, that way it's not fluctuating too much and I can keep it nice and steady and I don't feel like it's overheating. Uh, so with the, if you go towards the higher spectrum of the temperature, uh, you stand an easier chance to overheat the tank than you do with it gradually increasing up from 78. Uh, that way they can tolerate a little bit easier. So food, they eat pretty much anything. Uh, you, a lot of times these guys do fro like freeze-dried bloodworms, brine shrimp, uh, flakes, pellets. Mine love the bloodworms. It's like a treat for them. They gobble them right up. But like I said, each beta has different personalities, so they can pretty much eat whatever. Uh, you pick and choose what's best for you uh, and your beta. So pH 6 to 8. They're really not picky. Uh, they do like a more neutral, like 7.0 uh, to a softer water, but with breeding and tank raids and everything like that they are more kinda hardy when it comes to water parameters uh, even sometimes people don't even keep the tanks heated unfortunately uh, and you'll see tanks get down to 64, 66 and these guys are still going uh, swimming around and acting fine I don't recommend it but it does happen of course with these guys uh, because people think that you just throw them in a bowl and leave them uh, it's definitely not the case uh, like I said, they are aggressive towards other fish that look like them. Uh, so if you have guppies, those nice long flowing fins, they look like another beta. Uh, may not look like a beta, but that's just like with a shark. Uh, you may not be a seal, but when you're on that surfboard, you look like a seal. Uh, they're going to chop at you. Uh, maybe not as aggressive as a shark, but kind of an analogy to give you an idea of what's going on with that. Uh, like I said, Siamese, not Japanese. Uh, these guys are fighting fish. They get the name because they used to fight. Uh, what people would do is there's training methods on these guys, um, pretty crazy uh, to actually train a fish, but uh, they did do it. Uh, just kind of like your 
rooster fights and everything like that, people would bet money on these guys and fight them to the death. Uh, from what I hear, some pretty nasty males out there that they used to train. Uh, they probably still do uh, all over the world, unfortunately. Uh, these guys do breathe air, so don't worry too much about the filtration. Uh, you don't want over filtration on the tank because they don't like the strong currents. With those long fins, it makes it a little bit more difficult to swim in a high current uh, aquarium. So stick with a sponge filter. Uh, maybe even you could section off part of the tank and put a filter on that so that way it kind of has to sift through the divider as well. Uh, there's many different things you can do as well, like live plants too. They love live plants. Uh, they're just beneficial all around for any kind of aquarium that you can have them in uh, without your fish chewing them. Betas don't chew them, so it's perfect. Um, they do, like I said, like slow moving water, so keep that filtration down a little bit. Uh, tank size, I recommend. Now there's going to be a lot of different controversy out there. A lot of people say, well, they live in little rice paddies, uh, so you can put them in a puddle of water. Uh, you see a lot of big commercial breeders that you know keep them in real small containers. What I keep mine in is about two and a half to three gallons. Uh, and I know it seems a little bit small to some people, a little bit large to others, uh, but I do have some good filtration. I do a lot of water changes, so the water parameters stay really nice, crystal clear and clean. Uh, so that's usually not a problem at all for me uh, for the water. Uh, that way, too, with a small tank, some people keep them in a gallon tank, but that really makes it difficult to heat the aquarium uh, efficiently. Uh, because you don't want a lot of water movement, you're not going to get a lot of circulation with that heater, uh, so you're going to have a really nasty hot spot in some of the tanks. So if you have that sponge filter, it's key. Uh, it's going to help rotate some of the water around, and a lot of times if you put a sponge filter, a heater, all that in a one gallon tank, it doesn't look real pleasant. Uh, and a lot of times people don't like that, so they start taking things out, and that affects the health of the beta. Uh, so like I said, about a three gallon aquarium is perfect. That way you can put the heater in there, you can put the sponge filter, a plant, and you really don't even see the other stuff. It's just a nice wide open space for the beta to swim around in. Now they can go as big of a tank as you really want. Like I said, it's just that current that is key for them. Uh, you want to make sure that the tank isn't really, really high. Uh, it's actually be better for it to be longer and shorter. Uh, tall wise than it would be for you know like this. Uh, remember they do breathe the atmospheric air so they do need to get to the top. Uh, so I know one big thing is if you see your beta kind of laying on the bottom of the aquarium uh, kind of laying on the rocks sometimes that's normal but most of the time what that either is from is old age or your tanks too cold. Uh, so keep an eye on that as well because you want them to be able to reach the top of the aquarium so they can breathe uh, and that's definitely key for these guys. Next, speaking of aquariums, they're good jumpers. Uh, so a lot of times you're going to see lids on things. Never keep them in an open bowl, uh, open tank. They are going to jump out. Um, I recently just lost a female out of the five-gallon tank out of a hole this big. Uh, she jumped straight out of it. Uh, it took me forever to find her. Unfortunately, I was really upset about this. Uh, you know, when you lose a fish for something like that and you have it covered, uh, but just enough for the heater to go through and they jump out where the heater is, uh, it's pretty nuts. But it does happen, unfortunately. Uh, so what I did is I did take the area that was a little big and I set the heater down a little bit more and I plastic right over that area. So that way there's no space for basically them to jump out. Uh, so like I said, it does happen. Make sure those holes are tight and sealed and you don't have to worry about them jumping out. Next would be no direct sunlight. Uh, these guys do like a darker tinted water. Uh, you can do black water extract. You can do the Indian almond leaves and kind of set them in a tank and they'll give them that tannins uh, and it tints the water so that way they're not getting any crazy direct sunlight uh, if there is any bouncing off the walls or anything like that. Uh, so make sure to keep them out of direct sunlight. It's definitely key. And keep them in an area where the temperature is stable, not fluctuating a lot. Uh, a lot of times people keep them in kind of like a hallway, breezeway. Uh, near a door, near a window, you don't want that. You want to keep them kind of in the center of the house where the heat is going to stay stable and don't put them near heating vents, uh, radiators, anything like that. Something to keep it regulated. So, sorry this video went a little long. Uh, like I said, I just wanted to do a basic care sheet and I know I can break off into specifics and I will be later on in more videos to come. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I will be going over different diseases that affect these guys directly, exact tank uh, maintenance on these guys. 
how to do water change specifically. Uh, a lot of people recommend 100%, so I'll be going over that as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, please post it down below. Check out my website, mafishguide.com, for all your aquarium supplies and needs. Uh, I have more and more items being stocked daily, so I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. And like, subscribe, and share this video. And uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions of betas, post it down below, and I will definitely try my best to answer them. Thank you.